This is one of the seven appointed times that the Most High gave us an appointment for. I want to make every appointment that the Most High, the creator of the universe, made for me to get, get whatever he got for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to start off with prayer, but I'm going to read 1 Kings 8, 1 Kings 8, 47 and 48. It says, Yet, if they shall bethink themselves in the land where, where if they were carried captive, when you look around the earth today, it's only a few living descendants of people that were carried captive. The Bible is speaking to someone. It says, and they repent and make supplication the in their land that they were carried captives, saying, we have sinned and have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. And so we return unto thee with all thy heart and with all thy soul, soul in the land of our enemies. We are not in our land. That's all I say about that. Which led them away captive and pray unto thee toward their land. So the Bible is telling us to pray toward our land that the Most High promised to Abraham. In which thy giveth thy father in the city which thou hast chosen and the house which I have built by thy name. That house was built in Jerusalem. So when we pray, we pray toward that land as the Bible says in 1 Kings 8, 47 and 8. So I ask that you stand with me and face that land as we open up in prayer. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. While we're here, you will hear you may be seen. While you hear, you'll hear names with suffixes or beginnings with Yah. It may be Yahuwah, Yahweh, Yehovah. We are all trying to revert back to the names that we replace out of the Bible. Uh, within our community, a lot of us have started to at least try to learn Hebrew, if that was our language and our culture, and come back to it. So you will hear a lot of terms that you may not understand if this is your first time amongst a Hebrew assembly. But uh, ask your neighbor. We love everyone. We are commandment keepers. And the Bible tells us to love thy neighbor. And if you are in this room participating in the Feast of Yah, you are my neighbor. And I just want to welcome y'all. We are going to do a brief, what you want to call it? Exhortation. On the Feast of Trumpets, we did the lesson on trumpets yesterday, or the day of trumpets yesterday, Yom Toret in the Hebrew, and uh, the mores have the full. So we just want to, uh, like you said, we had the lesson yesterday, so we're not going to have no whole lesson on the Yahoo. So, but uh, we just going to have a brief uh, exhortation just to give an understanding on why we're here and why we observe this day, and as his people, why we observe this day. So, so first we want to start off in, what is this? Leviticus. Leviticus. 20, and please write these scriptures down too. Put them in your toolbox. Yeah, so y'all can go back and read them for y'all too. But Leviticus 23, starting verse 23. So uh, Leviticus 23, starting verse 23 says, <clears throat> And y'all spake unto Moses, saying, speaking to the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of the trumpets, a holy, a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein, but you shall offer an offering made by fire unto God. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's uh, then we can go to uh, Numbers chapter 10. And it says, uh, And y'all spake unto Moses, saying, Make you two trumpets of silver, a whole piece uh, shall you make them. You may use them for the calling of the assembly and for the journeying of the camps. And when you shall blow them, with uh, all the assembly shall assemble themselves to you 
at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. So it was used for to call the people to gather. That's one thing that the trumpet was used for. It says, okay. And if they blow well, one trumpet, then the princes, uh, which are heads of the thousands of Israel, shall gather themselves unto you. When you blow an alarm, then the camps that lie on the east part shall go forward. When you blow an alarm the second time, the camps that lie on the south side shall take their journey. They shall blow uh, an alarm for their journeys. But when the congregation is to be gathered together, you shall blow, but you shall not sound an alarm. And the sons of Aaron and the priests shall blow uh, with the trumpets, and they shall be for you a, a ordinance forever throughout your generation. For when? Forever. Forever. Yeah. And if you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppress, uh, that oppress you, then you shall blow an alarm with the trumpet, and you shall be remembered before Yah your Elohim, and you shall be saved from your enemies. So it was it was used to gather the people. Then it's saying it was used for war, so to signify war, and it brings the remembrance of His people to Yah. Mm -hmm. So Yah remembers us when we blow the shofar. It says, also in the day of your gladness, and in your solemn days, and in, your be in the beginning of your months, you shall blow the trumpets over your burnt offerings, and over the sacrifices uh, of your peace offerings, that you may be, that may be to you for a memorial before Yah. I am Yah, your Elohim. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so the last one we want to go to before we uh, close out, this is the book of Baruch. Book of Baruch. That's why I beg you guys to write it down and to uh, go do your research on a book called the Apocrypha. That the Apocrypha is, I believe, how many books? Four, Fourteen. Four, Fourteen books. Fourteen books that was in between Matthew, or Malachi, and Matthew. They took those 14 books out of the Bible, the original Bible, the 1611 King James Bible. It's in there. So you guys just do your research on it and you'll see why they took it out. So we started um, the book of Baruch, chapter 2, verse 27. It says, O Yahuwah our Elohim, you have dealt, you have dealt with us after your goodness and according to all that great mercy of yours. You spake by, the, by your servant Moses in the day when you did command him to write your law before the children of Israel. He said, Yah's law, not Moses' law, mm -hmm. the Most High's law. It says, what I lost my place. Okay, Say. saying, if ye will not hear my voice, surely this great multitude shall be turned into a small number, a small number among the nations, where I will scatter them. So he did scatter his people because they didn't listen to him. It says, for I knew that they would not hear me, because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivity, they shall remember themselves, and shall know that I am Yahuwah, their Elohim. For I will give them a heart and ears to hear, and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity, and think upon my name, and return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds. For they shall remember the way of their fathers, which sinned before Yahuwah. And I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they shall be lords of it. And I will increase them, and they shall, they shall not diminish. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. And I will no more drive my people of Israel out of the land that I have given. Hallelujah. So, the Most High is saying, His people, whom He has scattered, will start to wake up. They'll start to remember themselves in the land of their captivity, and they'll start to praise him. Mm -hmm. So this is us fulfilling what's written. Just like the Messiah who, who the world knows is Christ, it says all that is written shall be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. 
and it's happening before our very eyes. We are waking up in the land of our captivity. Just like, so, and just like Paul said, by all means, we must keep the feet. Must keep the feet. By all means. So, and I'm so happy that we are keeping this feast. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, within Israel, men led. Oh, you need to show part of Men led. So we're going to start off with the blowing of the shofar, and men are going to lead. So we want to ask every man that brought a shofar, and who wants to blow a shofar, please come forward now. If you don't have one, come forward. We're going to share. You're going to wipe them with the mouth off. And... I got wives. But y'all support the men, because the men are going to support y'all when y'all blow y'all. All right, Journey. Nala, Nala, you're gonna come up with me. You're gonna, you're gonna blow the baby one, okay? No, you're not. All right, you gonna blow this one? Because I can't blow this one. I'm gonna use this. You're gonna do this. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna blow one. Come on, come on, come on. Is that one of the Hebrew boys? Yeah, I guess we didn't heard about y'all. Come on up here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, as we lift up our voice with the trumpet, you lift up your physical voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One, two, three.
Show you where to go. The story of, of Jericho. Okay. On the seventh day, we all know what happened, right? They might not know, so we're finna teach them. But we want y'all to stand up. And what happened to the walls in Jericho, we want that to happen to you and to your seat. Y'all got it? Okay, so everybody stand up. Anybody gonna land back? You ready? You ready? You gonna stay? You must land back. The Most High talked to his people when they went to take a city called Jericho, and his commandments was walk around the city once a day, but you can't make any noise. So every day we had to go around one time. And on the seventh day, how many times we go around? Seven times. But you have to make noise and blow your shofars on the seventh day. So let's do day one. You gotta be quiet. Come on, follow me. These are the walls. Somebody say day one. Day one. Next day. Day three. Come on. 